Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Minimag. I'm Heather. I will be doing the project today. We're doing fantastical sculptural faces. Maybe a shot here. So what we're doing, we're using wood scraps to build some kind of um, face. And it can be a humanoid face, it can be an animal face, it can be whatever you want. And we're just using little scraps and popsicle sticks and things that we find around the house or out in the garage. So I hope if you're watching and you want to chat with me, um, please do that. I love to see what's going on. Let me see if I can find any chats here. They usually tell me if there's people talking to me. Whoops. I think I lost everybody. There, I'm back. Sorry about that. I was trying to see comments and instead I closed everything down. Excellent. Okay, so I, I know Parker is joining us and he bought got a um, kit that had all the materials for the for the month of June. So he has his wood scraps, but if you don't have a kit, you just need to find some wood scraps, a bigger piece that's going to be your base, and then some other piece that can be at a 90 degree angle. We're going to connect it somehow. And then it will just be all little bits and bobs. All right, so the project that I made, I turned it into an owl and I'll turn it, kind of turn it all around so that you can see because it's three dimensional. So you can see his nose po pointing out. And then I put feathers all the way around. His feathers are actually the little um, bits of wood that come in frames like canvas frames for when you're painting. They always give you a bunch to tighten your canvas and so I just used those to make his feathers and uh, I've got some popsicle stick legs and then just some other bits and bobs. So if you're ready what you will also need for sure is a hot glue gun and someone to give you a hand and if you have rubber gloves they help a lot for when you um, get glue on your fingers. I know it's helped me a lot of times with not burning myself. So I'm just going to put this up here. I'm going to get out a messy mat because I'm going to be doing some hot gluing and I usually make a mess. So there, I'm going to put that there. And I was looking at my scraps and I have a bunch of different sizes and shapes. And we can also paint these if we want. So it doesn't matter if it's colored or not. I've got one that's got a hole in it. I thought that was kind of interesting. I think I might start with this bigger one though, because then I'll have more room. So if I have that for my main body. So now I have to decide if I'm what kind of face am I going to make? Am I going to make a humanoid or a human of some sort? Or am I going to make an animal? And I love to make animals. As you can tell, I made the owl. Um, I really think I might want to make a crow. So I was looking at my things and wondering, what do I have that could look crowish? And I really like this one with a hole. Okay, so you need a base and you need something that you can put for a 90 degree angle. And usually it's probably thinner I don't know if that will work. I got this one. And then I could also make my face go wider like that. Oh, look. So that goes across. That might be a plan. I have that one. I got more of these pokey ones. What else? Oh, I've got one here that I cut with a scroll saw. That's kind of interesting. That might make it interesting. <gasps> Oh my gosh, that makes a perfect nose. I think I might use that for my nose. 
So if I have that for a nose, should I put his face like this? That would make him have a pretty big. Or should I put it like that? Then it would be wider. I think I'm going to go like that. All right. I'm going to actually glue the nose on first and then work on placing the other things around. I'm not sure if I'll need a little extra bracing with some smaller pieces because this is sticking out a long way. But let's give it a try. So I've got my glue gun. I'm going to put some glue here. Oh, it looks like I need a new glue stick. Luckily, I have a whole pile. And I wonder what Parker is going to be making, because I know that he is at home building away. Which way do I want his nose? This one? I guess it doesn't matter. I can flip him upside down if I want it. Okay. One poking out nose. Let's see. Look at that. Woo! Yeah, I think that way is good. Okay, I'm just gonna let that set up a little bit. So, if he has his nose, Parker's making a dog. Oh, excellent, that'll make an excellent one, Parker. So first step, Parker, make sure you have the base and the nose coming out. That's the main part, and then you just build from there. So here's, we've got this huge big nose, and now I want a crow, so I definitely want to have some feet and eyes. So I have these um, beer bottle or beer can lids. They make the best eyes. And I think I might use gray or blue, gray, blue, I think gray. I just need to snip them apart. Let's see if these scissors will work. These wire cutters. And I know Lindsay will have some of these. Parker's mom. Because Parker's dad works at the brewery sometimes. So he's probably got a never-ending supply. So I put eyes like that. That's kind of cool. I'm not going to glue them on yet. I'm just going to place things around and see how they are. So if Parker's making a dog, are you going to put big ears on Parker? And what kind of ears? Are you going to have them poking up or flopping down the side? He could have floppy ears or he could have poking up ears like a German Shepherd or like a hound dog. I wonder what she's going to choose. That could be super interesting. All right, what else does my crow need besides eyes? He said he needed some feet. So I'm going to look in my stash here. I have some little pieces like this that are like rectangles. He wants up ears. Oh, like a German Shepherd. Oh, good idea. And are you going to put some kind of mouth on yours, Parker? Like, oh, look, I could do something like that, too. And then it would be a talking crow's mouth. Kaka, kaka. That might be hard to glue. I will have to be thinking about how I'm going to make it stable. And that's the next problem you have when you're building things like this with glue is how to how to prop things up and make them more stable. Sometimes you have to add more pieces. For example, if I want my beak to go like this, I'll need to put some kind of a structure to give it support because just glue is not going to hold it in place. But a little bar like that of wood glued down will hold it in, into place. I think that's what I'm going to do. I like that idea of having an open beak. So if I put this here, 
a little bit on an angle. And then if I have another piece for his, like a chin piece almost, put under here. Remember, it's the sky's the limit. It's whatever your imagination can come up with. There, I'm going to push that down. And that will give some stability to, to my beak. Let's have a look. I'm going to put it this way. Oh, my eyes are falling off. See how now he's got his beak open a little bit? With this little brace right there. Excellent. Like that. Now I think I want to make some kind of feet. Now, birds have toes. I'm not sure how many toes they have. Three or four. And they have a leg. So I have a thin piece. I could use, I think. It's a little bit fatter. It's actually pretty big, so I can cut it into to size. And then I could add little toes with smaller pieces of popsicle stick, because this is a little bit wider. So, how long am I going to make his legs? Do crows have long legs? I'm not super short. I don't know, like that. Let's see. I also need room to glue it on the back. Maybe I'll make it like this big. So let's hope my pruning shears will cut the wood. There's one. Usually when I'm doing this, I do it in my garage. And then I have wood flying everywhere. There. So we have two pieces cut the same because we have two legs. So there's that, and now we want to put, I'm just going to move this up a little bit so we can work on his toes. So we have his two legs, and now we need some toes. So we have to look through our stash, and I know, Parker, you have some teeny tiny ones. I wonder what kind of, are you going to put feet on your dog, Parker? Some little skinny ones, if I can find enough. Parker, you could use like toothpicks to make really sharp teeth. Are you gonna put teeth in your in the mouth of your dog? I think that would be super cool. You did. You could make him ferocious. take these big ones out. Once we have it built, then we'll also have to decide if we're going to do any painting. We have colored ones. Let's see. Let's just see what we have. I'll make a little pile and then we'll be able to go from there. He's just doing a head, but using the tiny wood for whiskers. Oh, good idea for whiskers. I like that. Maybe I'll use these colored ones to put like feathers poking out all over my crow. Sometimes crows are a little bit ruffled up. That's a good idea, Parker. You do whiskers and I'll do feathers. Looking up all over. You may end up looking more like a puffball, though. Okay, we have a pile. So let's see. Our legs there. If I glue those on look interesting. That's what I'll do. I'll glue on his little toes. One, two, try to 
do this without burning myself. Three. There's one foot. My glue gun is making weird noises. There's his little legs. Now we just need to glue his legs to his body. If I wanted, I could add another board for a bot. If I wanted a bigger body, I could add another board down. But I think I'm just going to add his feet on the back. Now it starts to get tricky to be able to glue things on the back when you have things hanging off the front. So I'm going to place mine here on the, my messy mat. I'm going to put the glue on my, top of my legs and I'm just going to place this right on top. So if I get it all prepared ahead of time to know exactly where I want to put it. I think like that. Here and here. And I'm going to put his body on top. Give him a little bit long legs. His legs look a little uneven. There. And push down. Let's see. Yes. He is stuck. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is add his eyes and then I'll work on feathers and maybe some eyebrows. I don't know, do crows have eyebrows? Very big eyebrows? Maybe not really, but it can be our, our fantasy bird. Now the eyes could go this way or I could flip them this way. Which one do I like better? What do you think? I have some smaller lids that we could put on top if I wanted to make it more, ooh, more three-dimensional. What do you think about that? That's kind of interesting. That looks kind of crow-like. These are actually just the, um, inserts for paper towel rolls. I always keep all these little bits and bobs around the museum so that we could use them for other projects. So go like that or could go like that. Nope, I think I like them this way. Okay, so I'm going to add these first. I'm just going to make a little lake of glue inside and then plunk that right down in the middle. What would we do without hot glue? So beneficial. There's one. Let's move this one over here. Another little lake of glue. Put that down. Give it a second. I'm going to put my bird upside down so I have easier access. And I think I'm going to put his eyes fairly high up on his face, like that. Yeah. Same thing. Put a little petal of glue. Pop that down. Pop that one down. Now we want to do feathers. So we were talking about using these, and they also have these really chunky sticks, which I kind of like. And there's also, if we want to put eyebrows on, we could do something like that. I don't know if crows really have eyebrows. Like owls certainly can and do. I don't know about crows. I think I might be turning him more into an owl if I give him eyebrows. Or maybe I just want to stop and I could give him a couple wings. That's another thing we could do. Let's 
you have a couple pieces that are pointy, let's see. What if I had them like that as wings? You know, I think I really like that. Do I have any more pointy ones? Let me look. those two. I was looking to see if I had two that were more the same size because one of mine is much quite a bit longer than the other but that's all right. Can be a little bit of a wonky bird. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm not going to give them feathers with the little pieces. Instead I'm going to give them wings and let them fly. All right, so again, just like we did his legs, we're going to position the wings where we want them, so then we can just lift off the body, put some hot glue, and then just push the body back down on top. So, let's see what we can do here. Should we have the wings so it shows off, off the side? Or totally covered? I think like that. Maybe like that. There. I think that's what I'm going to do right there. So I'm just going to lift this up. I might flip that over. I had a big gob of glue from before. Let me check it. So I have it both coming up the top, this one a bit more, and then down here at the bottom, I have it just on the edge. So that should work. I'll have lots of gluing space. I'm going to glue on. And then I can line it up how I had it. And push down. There. Okay, I think I have my bird constructed. Now it's just deciding if we should paint it. Parker, are you painting yours or are you leaving yours in a natural wood state? I haven't decided yet. I'm thinking though I'd like to paint it black. I think that would make it definitely look like it's more of a crow as opposed to just some kind of bird. I don't know if I actually brought the black paint though. Let's have a look and see. I brought our basket of paint that we use in mini mags so we have lots of different colors. I don't see any black in there. I do some, see some yellow and purple. Purple can always work. Let's get my palette. And I have some paper towels. Now remember, if you're right-handed, always put your paint on the right side. That way you're not going across. You have some water. And I may just grab the black paint. Give me one minute. I'm back. A big bottle of black paint. I'm using acrylic. You can use a uh, temper paint. That will work fine. That's like poster paint that you would find. The only thing if you're using poster paint is that if it gets wet, it will come off. So if you want to put it outside, you need to use acrylic paint. Okay, I've got a big blob of black paint. So I have my man, my crow, and I don't think I want to make his beak black. I think I just want to make his body black. Then I'll have to decide whether I want his beak to be yellow or not. 
But I think, I think crows are all black. Maybe I'll make his um, beak purple or something like that. Jazz it up. And I might not do like a super good paint job. I might leave some of the yellow showing. Make it more scritchy scratchy. How's everybody doing? Again, like I was saying, we do have the art bags that we've made up at the museum if you want to buy one. It's got all the projects for the whole summer or for the whole month of June. Oh, I definitely should make his legs a different color though, I think. I think that's a good idea. Get in here. Parker, you could make your dog uh, red like Clifford. That would be super interesting. I wonder why Parker likes German Shepherds. Is it because you like police dogs, Parker? Is there a show on TV that you like that's got a German Shepherd? Fun to, usually police dogs are German Shepherds. Have you ever been to uh, Innisfail where you can see the police dogs doing their work, do their, doing their training? That's really interesting. That's a fun, a fun outing during the summer. Going up to that. All right. I think I might do this part a little bit. He said because he has a stuffy German Shepherd. Oh, nice. Parker, are you painting yours? You're probably already done. Parker is one of my mini maggers and he is speedy. He usually beats me. And he definitely beats his sister. Oh, look, this one already has some black on it. Perfect. Make it easier. Another thing you can do, if you want to hang these up on the wall, you can glue a hanger on the back. Hopefully, the training place is open this summer. Yeah, was it closed last summer? Probably was, wasn't it? You can make a whole day of it. You can go there, and then you can go to the zoo that's got the bears and everything that's close to, close to Bowdoin. Hang out with the bears. All right. He's looking more crowy. Oh, I'm liking him. I really like making things out of scrap pieces of, of wood like this. I'm thinking I should go around to all the different construction sites <laughs> and be stocking up and having a big pile. Later this month, we are making this really interesting fish, a flounder. We're making it out of cardboard, but it would be super beautiful made out of wood. Just an FYI. When if you make the flounder with us, you can be thinking, hmm, maybe we could make another one out of wood. So if you want to put a hanger, flip it over, and you could use like a pipe cleaner or something like that. Just make just twist it into a loop, and then you could hot glue it onto the back. What's Parker doing? He's painting right now. Oh, you haven't glued it yet, so you're painting all your pieces before you glue. Good idea. Oh my gosh, Parker, your mom just wrote and said you get to go camping with the bears. <gasps> oh my goodness. You're going to be up all night listening to those 
tigers and the jaguars roaring. I think I might do this little thing here, black too. I hope you're not too scared. You'll have to tell me in the fall if it was scary or not. I don't know if the rest of you know that, but in Innisfail, there's a zoo, and they have a lot of bears, and they have jaguars, and they have a lot of animals. It's a big, a big area, but they, uh, you can sign up to go camping there overnight in the same area, so then you would, you would hear all the animals roaring and stuff at night. A lot of animals are more active during the night, and so it would be super fun. There, so I have them all black. Put that up there so you can see. Now, I think I want to do his legs. Put some yellow here. I have the urge to put yellow on. Whoops, that was a lot of yellow. But Parker, are you camping in a tent or in a trailer? How brave would you have to be to, to camp in a tent there? Very brave. Okay, let's do his legs. Now, usually yellow is a much more translucent color. So you'll see it doesn't cover nearly as well as the black did. Uh, one way to fix that is to add some white. White will make it less transparent, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm, I'm all right if some of the wood tones show through. That's all right with me. All right, got one leg. Let's do his other leg. I actually don't think crows have yellow feet. I need to have a real picture of a crow and then I would know for sure. But my crow does. And then maybe I'll put a little bit of yellow on his beak. I'm not quite sure where. Maybe in here. I want to put some purple on his beak too. Just give him a little yellow tinge. And then got some purple. Hopefully it's purple and not brown because I have a vague recollection of squirting some out and it was brown. But nope, perfect. It's purple. Now this purple is fairly light. If I want to make it darker, I can add a teeny bit of black. If you add black to things, I'll just do a little bit because it's very overpowering. And purple tends to be quite see-through also. Like, see when I put it like that, you can see the plate through. Just make it a little bit darker. There. Let's see. I'm going to do the ridge of his nose with this purple. It's going to be luscious. You won't be able to see until I flip it up. There, what do you think? Purple nose? Let's do the side. Now if we get some yellow mixed in, it's okay because um, the yellow added to the purple will just turn it a little bit of brown. Oh, Parker's going in a trailer. <laughs> Smart move, Parker. I think I would be a little bit too chicken to go in a tent. But I am pretty chicken. I'm afraid the bears will eat me. They have a really um, fun, huge, big beaver that you can pet and get your picture taken with. Beavers are very interesting animals. I've been following the beaver cams this, this spring. 
or and some also rehabbed beaver that are living in people's houses because their parents something happened to their parents and so they lived in people's houses over the winter and it's very interesting The history of Red Deer, actually, there is a historical beaver, Mickey the Beaver. There's some um, stories written about him. He was uh, a beaver that was found and lived in someone's house as a pet. And he was always making dams. He would take things and take them to the garage and try to make his own little dam. Mickey the Beaver. Okay, and I'm going to do the back side too. It's one thing with sculptures, you have not just one side, but you have all the different sides that you need to think about. I mix all these colors together, it's going to give me a brown color, dark brown, unless the black takes over. Might have to add more paint. Put a little water in there. You won in an auction. Oh, interesting. Pictures with the bear and the animal paintings too. Well, that will be a fun treat. Parker's mom was just telling me that they, they won this outing in an auction. So that should be a fun outing. Okay. And let this paint dry a second and we can have a look and see if we missed any spots. Let's see. Inside of his mouth, of his beak, the very top layer, I think I need to put something there. I've got a little bit of yellow on the inside. It's pretty bright though. Maybe I'll add a little, I'll mix a little um, purple and red if I have any. I kind of have a pink color. Let's see how that works. If I add a little, let's see. Purple and pink mixing together. We'll add a little yellow. That'll make it a little bit more brown. There, that's not a bad color. What do you think? Make a good inside of a mouth. I'm going to have to tip him. Hold him in my hand. Try to get inside of his mouth there. Parker had the right idea by painting before he glued it together. Smart move, Parker. We'll give it a little dimension because everything's not the same color. We have some lighter yellow in the middle. All right, let's have a look. Smooth up my brush strokes. Here's his beak. Oh, I see I missed a spot of black on the very top. Remember, like I was saying, sculpture, you have to look at all the different sides. There, let's see that. Any touch-ups we need? If you want it to be really opaque and covered, then you could do a second coat. A second coat. You can also paint right over top plastic. With acrylic paint, it will stick.
I'm getting close to being finished. Parker says, good job. Oh, thank you. Do you have almost have yours finished? I think these would look very charming. Hanging outside in the garden. Scaring away the real crows. Do you think it would work? So there's my crow. I'm going to hold it up here. I'll twist it around so you can see. Parker is done. He is always done. He's super fast. There's his beak. It's one side. And there's his other side. Oh, I see another spot I missed. Right there. There, I think we're almost finished. Next week, I believe we're making bird masks. And they are, you can make them huge. It's all made out of recycling. But the one thing that you really need is the cup holders from McDonald's. The four cup holders because they make a really good nose beak, just the way that they're built. So if you want to make one exactly like mine, get the, the drink holders from McDonald's. Um, besides that, you need thin cardboard, like from a cereal box. And you'll need a lot of those. And also, um, like toilet paper rolls, we can cut into three pieces. Those are all to make feathers. So the face will be the um, drink holder and then all in a big fan around is going to be feathers made out of cardboard so cereal boxes, toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, anything that's thin easy to cut but will still hold its shape. And uh, hot glue again just makes life um, way faster and paint will definitely be painting that. So we really look forward to seeing you next week um, with, our with our bird masks. And the one that I have is huge. Shh. I don't know if I'll make the next one that big, but uh, here's to seeing you next week. Have a really good day. Enjoy the 30-degree weather. We'll see you later.